Have you ever wondered why many people say that the Bible is a flat earth book? Well, today I got my new compact Bible in, um, which is so cute. I can put it in my back pocket, which I love. But um, I was reading in Genesis today, and you know, we've always heard the word rakia, which is translated as expanse or firmament. Um, I found a really cool note in here that I wanted to just bring up. So you see in here, let there be an expanse, and there's a note down here, and it says, or canopy. And then it just had me thinking, you know, a canopy is very different than this. A canopy is more like this. And that canopy separated the waters from the waters. Still trying to figure out how that fits into this. Anyways, just some thoughts. Okay, so Flat Earth, um, does the Bible support it? We are talking about Isaiah 40:22. So let's look it up together. And it is he that sits on the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are grasshoppers that stretches out the heavens as a curtain and spreads them out as a tent to dwell in. So that word circle is chug, circle, circuit, compass. And it comes from um, to encircle, encompass, describe a circle, draw around, or make a circle. So I was also curious to see how many other times this word is used. And here are some of the examples I got from the Blue Letter Bible. So thick clouds are covering to him that he seeth not, and he walketh in the circuit of heaven. So does that mean sphere? Um, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. So a circle is more like this. Not this. This is more like a ball. Kind of like this. Ball circle. Also, I've heard that most civilizations believed that the earth was indeed a fixed, immovable, plain earth. Here are some of the ancient depictions of earth. Let's see what the word has to say. Everybody, I'm sure by now has heard this account, but let's read it line for line. In the beginning, God made the heaven and the earth, but the earth was unsightly and unfurnished, and the darkness was over the deep. The deep of what? And the Spirit of God moved over the water. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided between the light and the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the water, and let it be division between water and water. And it was so. And God made the firmament, and God divided between the water that was under the firmament and the water that was above the firmament. And God called the firmament heaven, and God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water which is under the heaven be collected in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. But let me show you something else. The sun, the moon, and the stars weren't even created until the fourth day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, to divide between day and night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years, and let them be for light in the firmament of, he of the heaven, so as to shine upon the earth, and it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light for regulating the day and the lesser light for regulating the night, the stars also. And he placed them in the firmament. Let's rewind just a little bit to that verse right there. God said, let there be lights in the firmament. What's the firmament? It's Strong's number H7549, Rakia, which is an extended surface, solid, expanse firmament, Expanse flat as a base, firmament of vault of heaven supporting waters above, considered by Hebrews as solid and supporting waters. The root word is raka, which is to beat, stamp, to beat out, to spread out, to stretch. Beat out like a work of metal. Does that sound like space to you? I'd also like to point out that he made the light before he made the stars and the sun and the moon. Kind of flies in the face of everything we're taught in the religion of science, huh? 
The firmament is a firm structure separating waters from waters. And trust me, I'm not the only one who understands it this way. Here are some references of study Bibles. There's this one. This one. This one's pretty cool as well. Oh, look, there's another one. And a couple more. Is it so hard to believe that we've been lied to? Hey there. So if you can drop the reference down for the translation that you're talking about, I would really appreciate that because I want to check that out. But also, doesn't it make more sense, at least to me it does, of people below the earth in this model rather than this model? All right, all right. But let me show you a couple of things. This photo was taken by an amateur with a weather, weather balloon uh, right around 100,000 miles above the surface. Here we have another amateur that was right around, I think, 94,000 miles. And this is the footage that their GoPro got. Do you see the curve? 94,000 miles. Here's the problem. Most of this footage is done with a fisheye lens. Here's an easy comparison. A brother named Rob Skiba, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he has some great research. He sent his own weather balloon out, and I think he got right around 98,000 miles. Okay, the first picture right here is with the fisheye lens, and then the second picture is on unskewed by the fisheye lens. This is a regular non-fisheye lens. Do you see my problem here? Okay, so here's one. Um, I got a few more for you too. Okay, so this one was a wide shot and I actually screenshotted it to show the whole picture on the screen, but um, I like this one because you can tell that the sun is small and local with that hot spot down there on the ground. Here's another one that has a, a sort of hot spot where you can see how the light is really condensed in that one spot. And here's another one. Okay, so I first want to say that it is not a salvation issue. We are saved through faith by grace alone and walking out the walk and fighting the good fight for the rest of our lives. So the reason I think it matters it's because I have seen people who did not believe in God come to faith in Christ once they found out that we were not a chaotic spinning ball in ever-expanding space, but that we were an intentional creation and that our Creator is right above us. Here's some flattered verses. I'll let you pause to read them. You can also screenshot it if you want. For me though, the idea of flat earth also takes away the idea of um, the alien deception. You know, that little idea that somehow aliens seeded us or that they're going to invade. This is a model that I got from a brother named Ken. Um, he is on YouTube. He has a lot of great videos. His channel is called Hanging on His Words if you want to check it out. Um, but. This is a pretty good representation. A lot of people who hear about Flat Earth are confused because why would all the planets and everything be round but our Earth be flat and in the midst of space? But a lot of Flat Earthers that I know personally don't believe that space is there. They believe that the planets that we see in telescopes are angelic beings and the stars that they see in high magnification look very different than what we're shown and told anyways. And many, many civilizations believed that the earth was this type of creation. But just go back and read your Bible and pray about it because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. You know, believe in Yeshua, Jesus, and walk the walk and, you know, do good. And that's truly all that matters. Okay, so from your perspective, I can totally understand why you'd be confused. But in the perspective of a lot of the um, flat earthers that I have spoken with, and for me in general, um, 
we don't believe that planets are some dusty or and or gaseous uh, cosmological being or body in space. In fact, a lot of us don't believe that there is this vacuum of space, but that there is a creation and that we are a sort of enclosed terrarium type deal and above us is our creator. Um, I know many people who were atheists who came to believing in God when they have observed the differences in our actual view versus what we're told when, you know, in science now we're told that we are this insignificant speck of a planet in this huge galaxy and outside of that is more and more and more galaxies of endless space and it's constantly expanding and we were formed by total chaos, right? Most of us or many of us don't believe that. We believe that we are intentionally created and that we were given earth beneath a dome firmament and all of our ecosystem is within it. In the same way that you can create a closed ecosystem with a terrarium by introducing different plant life, fauna and flora in a jar and closing it and it can actually be an enclosed system for years and years and years. In fact, there's a guy who, who did it and it's lasted like over 70 years. But it's also okay for us to have differing opinions. I know some people who are um, flat earthers who do not believe in a creator. But um, for me personally, and for many people that I know of, we do believe in a creator, and we do believe that the space idea actually causes more disbelief than an apostasy than it causes belief. So let's talk about Enoch. Is it reliable? Is it scripture? I think so. Not only do I think it's scripture, but I think it's meant for our generation, the generation of the end times who's returning back to the Father's ways. And here are only a couple of evidences that make me really consider it to be scripture. And this is apart from me really feeling like the Spirit led me to this book. So do you remember in the book of Matthew when the Pharisees were asking Yahushua about um, the woman and the seven brothers and who would be her wife in the resurrection. And it says, Yeshua answered them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of Yahuwah. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like Yahuwah's angels in, in heaven. Now what scriptures was he talking about? So what he was quoting is actually found nowhere else but in the book of Enoch. But you from the beginning were made spiritual, possessing a life which is eternal and not subject to death forever. Therefore, I made not women for you, because being spiritual, your dwelling is in heaven. So Messiah himself quotes the book of Enoch. But there's one other place in the canonized scripture where Enoch is referenced. And this is in the book of Jude. It's right here in Jude. About these, also Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord came with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly of their works of ungodliness which they have done in an ungodly way and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. This is also only found in Enoch right here. Um, in the Etzephir, which is what I'm reading from, it's Enoch 2, but in a lot of the other versions of Enoch, it's at the end in Enoch 1. Um, but it says, Behold, he comes with ten thousands of his Kodashim to execute judgment upon them and destroy the wicked and reprove all the carnal for everything which the sinful and wicked have done and committed against him. So, as you can see, both Messiah and in the book of Jude, it was quoted. There's a few other places too, but just in effort to keep this video short, we won't address them. But if you have any other questions, let me know.